Okay, so this is going to be a conversation for those who want to fully commit to progress. Those who want to, in particular, to be able to overcome procrastination, carelessness, you know, quitting early, making excuses. It's those who want to be able to get past that to develop the, the qualities that help us move forward in life. And it's all about increasing commitment and perseverance through greater discipline, concentration and focus. Okay, so a lot of times people are just too scattered, or they don't put in enough effort to ever be successful, and they don't ever really get anything meaningful done. It's all about overcoming what has been called the unwillingness monster inside of us to make true lasting change. Okay. So that's what today's topic is all about. Now, in your life, awesome. there's nothing greater than the battle between your disciplined mind and your undisciplined mind. Okay, so di but discipline is necessary for success. No good can be attained without proper effort, just as you can't build a super tall skyscraper without a solid foundation. Discipline is our foundation for lasting success in anything, right? And to need to, to succeed in anything in life, you need to learn how to win that battle. And to do that, you must value progress over comfort. All right, because a lot of people make comfort the deciding factor in their life choices. And they suffer with the consequences of that. Historically, this has been called sloth. And it's considered one of the seven deadly sins. And you might have seen the Brad Pitt movie, I think it's seven, the modern movie, but seven deadly sins. But <laughs> sloth shows up in our life as a reluctance to make the proper effort for your duty and obligations physically so just being physically lazy mentally so just not getting over bad moods bad thoughts and stuff like that and even spiritually with indifference to greater truth and understanding right so it shows up in three dimensions and it's a it's a difficult a deficit to overcome because sloth makes people too lazy and unfocused to put in the proper focused effort to overcome it. Okay. So, right. so it's, it's like a spell that doesn't want to be broken. So you have to, the first step is to develop a strong dislike against this behavior to even stand a chance. You must come up with like really compelling reasons why you should be repulsed by just choosing immediate comfort uh, in the moment for your, for your life choices. Because we all have a, we all have a, a duty and, and responsibility to give back in this life by becoming more. All right, so yeah. let's get good at identifying it. How does this habit of comfort over progress show up in life? What are some, how does the undisciplined mind win? What are some examples? Do you have any thoughts? Um, why comfort? is kind of repulsive or trying to we're trying to make it more repulsive um i well, would say well first we're going to try to identify it so it's kind of like how does this thing even show up would it what can it what kind of behaviors and thoughts and actions might it manifest as well i would say like um maybe a little bit of fear mm, absolutely so it would be like yeah fear of success because they think it's going to come with pain or fear of failure yeah, I was going to say, even though I failure is a stepping more. stone success yeah yeah it could be uh it could be sleeping in instead of getting up and doing a morning routine right it could be um hiding from the truth so people choose comforting lies excuses and justifications instead of facing the uncomfortable truth of matters so they'll bend and twist the truth to save face as a matter right. of comfort, right. you know, or victim mentality, because it's more comfortable to tell ourselves we're a victim than to tell ourselves we are irresponsible in some ways, right? In some cases, right? We're hiding our faults, you know, like that's why in AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, the first sign of an alcoholic is denial, right? Mm. They try to hide their faults, yeah. right? Um, right. It could show up as complacency or motivational decline, a lack of focus, no proper plan, lack of structure, 
people will say, not now, I don't have time, you know, I'll do it later. Let's face it, is there ever the right time for anything? Like there's always a million reasons why this is not the right time. <laughs> it's so true. You know, so it could be like helplessness. People quit easily. They say, they say I can't do anything about it. Anyone who yeah, says no. I can't do anything about it, usually in, in many contexts, that could be um, mental laziness, right? Or I'm already doing the best I can. I can't give anymore when you know that's not true. Or it's too much for me. I'm not smart enough. I'm not uh, courageous enough. I'm overwhelmed, blah, blah, blah. I don't have the resources. I don't have the money. Even though you can always make more money and you can always be more resourceful, right? Right. Uh, and looking for quick fixes is a way that it shows mm -hmm. up. People who have the yeah. habit of looking for like a, like a get rich, they're always looking for a get rich quick scheme. They're, they, they're looking for a shortcut that doesn't exist in many cases, right? <laughs> They want success to come easier than it can, you know, you know, so that, and I think, uh, you know, another way is, uh, distractions and escapism, making yeah. the unimportant stuff seem important and getting consumed with, you know, social media, video games, TV, watching sports, um, as a way to avoid our obligations, right? Yeah. Foolishness arises from the inability to judge what correct conduct is. And a lot of people will make these little things seem like big things and prioritize it over everything really meaningful in life. You know, we have a limited time of, we have a limited amount of time in life. And once it's gone, it's gone. And if we have like fruitless hobbies or low quality social activities and uh, all these other distractions eating up our time, then it can ultimately limit our potential of who we become. Right. Yeah. So um, indulging in self-pity is another way. People like to comfort themselves with it. Mm -hmm. I deserve a rest. I'm tired all the time. I'm stressed. I'm, it's too difficult or indulging in, self-limiting fear like i've got too much to lose so um scarcity mentality like that that's all like stuff we do to stay comfortable instead of stuff we could be doing for progress right right any other examples do you think we could say well potentially like even like in terms of like choosing comfort and so forth, maybe even in terms of your relationships or the people around you, that's who you're going to choose oh, in terms yes. of like complacency and stuff. Yeah. So being around you know, those same people who match that energy. Yeah. So comfortable, familiar relationships instead of ones that help us grow. Right. right. So, um, you know, a lot of times people have enablers that soothe them into their delusions and help them with their comforting lies. And they're like, yeah, you're right. You are innocent. And they, you know, like, yeah. And they take advice from their enablers. They turn their enablers into advisors. So yeah, that's a, that's definitely <laughs> a, a way that it shows up. Good one. Nailed it with that. <laughs> Mouse drop. <laughs> Monica with a big one. Okay. So <laughs> let's go on to the next step. Like that's, we just want to be able to identify to know what it is. Right. right? And it's kind of like, you know, and it, and it could be any of those things where you're just, you're just not moving forward in some way. And what is it that's right. holding you back? It could be lack of making a clear plan for yourself. It's like, why have you not had a plan for how to move forward in life for all these years? <laughs> right. Like you should, you should right. be focused on progress. Right. Right. You're distracting yourself with, you know, all these other, all these other amusements. All right. So, okay. So here's my thoughts with this. Rather than having a to-do list, we need to start with a to-be list uh, in order to overcome sloth. And we have to be maximally motivated to choose progress over comfort. We have to be like 10 out of 10 motivated. Because if you're only like five out of 10 motivated, comfort's going to win. Six out of 10 motivated, comfort's going to win. Like, we, we have to coach and school ourselves, you know, like to be able to do this. But before we do, we need to address helplessness, which is one of the manifestations of this. 
some people will think, well, there's no real point because success isn't even possible in this area. Okay, so we need to overcome helplessness before we move forward with a solution on this. All right. So uh, because as long as you truly believe it's impossible to break this pattern, you'll never put in a committed effort. You'll always sabotage yourself. The spell of suffering will keep you trapped. And through confirmation bias, you will seek out evidence to support this self-limiting pattern. Right. And that's what people do. They'll be like, yeah, but so-and-so says this. So, you know, people can't change this. It's just, this is who I am. This is who I am. And they'll be like, right. I have to be me. I'm like, that's not you. That's an attitude. You can change your attitude. What? <laughs> Come on. Don't tell me this, this, these lies. Right. But um, realistically in coaching for as many years as I have, this is what I'll face right away is like the, the reason that people are so stuck in it is because they'll immediately use helplessness to, to block any solution and receptivity to any solution. So I feel like uh, helplessness is like kind of just like a way of like copying out, like in terms of accountability and being responsible, right? Yeah, yeah, it is. And you get it. The way I look at it is when people do that, we have to have compassion for them because they're under a spell of false reasoning. And the way, yeah. how does evil show up in life? Most often as false reasoning which leads to action that moves us away from happiness and into suffering. That's how evil shows up. It shows up. So when I see fault, faulty reasoning, I know, you know, this is a sacred conversation we're about to have because we're going to battle with an evil attitude. The, the attitude that's creating all your misery, you're protecting it now, but that's yeah. its defense mechanism. Right. Makes sense. Yeah, no, for sure. You know, like sometimes people will say, well, uh, and it, here's an example. Do we have the potential to change what we focus on? Yes or no? Of course. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. I've had people say no. Okay. And they say, well, you know, thoughts come to us sometimes. And I said, you're right. But you know, it's what you do with your thoughts that matters. And you can decide how you want to focus your thoughts. When a troubling thought comes to you, you can think what's good about this. What can be learned? How can I make it better? You can focus on that as those aspects of the thoughts. Right. I don't think we control all the thoughts that come to us. No. no, but we can certainly control what we focus on after if we make the intention. Right. Right. Otherwise these thoughts, are, these thoughts are ruling us. So, um, so that's the one thing, you know, do we have the potential to change what we focus on? Do we have the potential to change what we believe? Yes. Yeah. Do you have the potential to decide what you do? Yes. Can you change what you do? <laughs> For sure. <laughs> can you change your motivation? Can you, if you needed to, are you the one that can control your motivation? Yeah. Yeah. You could, you can do it through what you focus on, right? Can you be happy if you decided to? <laughs> yes. Yes. Because happiness is a result of attitude and attitude comes from the inside, not from the outside. And that's why people who have lived in the most like war torn, depraved countries have known nothing but joy. People have done that. Why? Because of attitude. So it is possible. So if we tell ourselves things are different than what everything I just mentioned, then we succumb to helplessness. We're, so we need to uproot these lies that we tell ourselves that create pain and block us from progress. Okay. And a big step to that is to share freely your thoughts with a wise and worthy mentor or coach so that, you know, we can put those thoughts to a healthy test because only truth can stand the test, can stand to be challenged. Lies cannot. Bring your objections to the surface so they can be challenged in a healthy way. You know, seek out counsel um, from somebody worthy because there's a lot of pretenders out there and <laughs> pretenders will just add to confusion. You know, when the blind lead the blind, they fall into the same pits of misunderstanding. So don't use your enablers here. Like that's, that's what I'm saying is for most people, like their enablers would be yeah. like, no, no, you're right. You, you know, you're right as always. Right. So <laughs> that's something we need to do. We need to just get some outside perspective. Um, anybody who's got sloth, I'm like, you just, you need outside perspective. I don't think you can, it, it's, it's something that we definitely benefit from help with. So 
success is possible because we control everything that matters. All right, which is all of these things. Okay, so the ingredients for success are already within you. You can change your focus. You can change what you believe. You can change what you do. You can change your attitude if you really want to. The, the ingredients for success are within you. And change, it's just a matter of motivation. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of ability. As uh, Tony Robbins once said, he's like, you know, somebody could follow you around for weeks holding a gun up to your head and threaten to pull the trigger the next time you have a cigarette. You know, you'd quit for those two weeks, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we can change as long as we are, we get our motivation to the right level. So here's what we need to do next. We need to set a foundation of motivation, okay? <laughs> and we, we, this needs to be done really well because, and, and I find people are not typically good at this and that's why they suffer because, you know, they haven't reached that motivational boiling tipping point, boiling point. That's Red, my little buddy. Hey, Red. Hey, good morning. Hey, Red. <laughs> hey, Red. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I put out some, some food for him. He comes in the morning uh, really early before the other squirrels get here. So smart. I've known That's him since he's do. a little one. <laughs> <laughs> getting, all, getting all the good stuff before yeah, yeah, it runs yeah. out. <laughs> okay, so um, here's what we need Foundation. to think of. We need to do, and we can do I go, you go here. Okay, we can okay. do this as a group, as a team, okay? What we need to come up with really good answers on why is it a bad idea to choose comfort over progress as a value choice in our lives? Put another way, why is it important we choose discipline over undisciplined? Like, what are the worst possible outcomes of choosing the com making the comfortable choice all the time uh, and choosing progress over comfort? Think about the pain, think about the regrets, think about the disappointments and the sufferings and the, the problems created and everything else what what are some of your thoughts on why we should why it's a bad idea well i think i think it's a bad idea because one like you said we don't have like we have a short period of time on earth and we don't know that timeline so i think i think coming to the end of it, it you wouldn't want to have like those regrets or missed opportunities yeah yeah so people are just going to dabble their way through life without mastering anything in a meaningful right. way, scattered thoughts and actions without directing them usefully, right? Love it, right. love it. Perfect, okay, I'm gonna go into one. It creates a cycle of personal pain. Mm -hmm. You know, you make yourself a prisoner, like the, the pain of the past becomes the pain of the future because no progress is ever really, people are lazy about working on their laziness. So it becomes a self-perpetuating right. cycle of disappointment and mental anguish right it becomes over time it becomes and we get stuck in unwanted thoughts and emotions and we can't break free because we always resist the needed effort to break free which often and so it becomes a complete and utter mental hell and nobody can get you out except for you it's a do-it-yourself project right and the value betrays itself you know when we choose comfort it promises comfort but what do we get we get more discomfort ironically yeah, and, you know, and, and as Yogananda once said, people behave like donkeys, they act on instinct, <laughs> like an animal, right? No matter how much they suffer the consequences, they go on stubbornly and they nourish their bad habits. They quickly forget the painful results and never learn from their experiences, right? right. It's our job to break free from these undesirable tendencies, whether it's a habit or a thought. Like that's our, that's our job and duty in this lifetime. But anyway, it's a cycle of personal pain and we never break free because we never give ourselves the discipline to break free. All right, right, over to you. I think it's a bad idea too, because even in terms of like your potential, like your max potential, whether it's like physical, emotional, spiritual, it's never discovered if you choose comfort or challenge. Ah. Like you don't see outside that box. You're kind of like boxed in or in quicksand because you you only know comfort, right? Yeah. So there's no, yeah, you, there's no ability to grow and, and challenge your, you know, your character, your physical capacity, your mental. So. 
Yeah. Yeah. FOMO on being you. <laughs> you miss out on being who you are. What's up, Blue Jay? Hey, Blue Jay. I've seen a lot of those lately. Yeah. Maybe it's a time of year Beautiful. for Blue Jays. Um, yeah. And we don't know what we're missing out on. We're missing out on the experience of being our higher self in this lifetime. You know, we never know the full measure of this. And we kill the high potential version of you. That's what procrastination does. It creates the funeral of the higher self in this lifetime. Basically. The opportunity to help others is lost too. Their higher potential has been killed. As, as uh, Ashley Montague wrote, you know, the deepest personal defeat suffered by human beings is constituted by the difference between what one was capable of becoming and what one has in fact become, hmm. right? So, and to add to yours, we let others down. You have many gifts inside you. I have gifts inside me and whoever's watching this, you have gifts inside you as well. And hiding your gifts from those who can benefit and positively change from your shared gifts, you know, is something that we do when we indulge in this behavior because your gifts can relieve the suffering of other people, right? When you're wiser and better, you can help others be wiser and better, right? Compassion should lead to action. You know, if a baby is hungry, we don't just let it cry. We take action. You don't ignore it out of personal comfort. Well, think of all the people out there who are suffering in their own way because we have not become our better selves. Consider the people who are suffering right now that need the help that only your higher self will be able to provide once you're smarter and more capable. Like, just think of the cries of those people, right? That you won't be able to help until you help yourself. Right. The whole of society is deprived of your unique gifts, your offerings, your contributions. You're turning the back on them if you don't proceed with progress. You're hoarding the gifts you were meant to share. Some people chose to incarnate in this lifetime, in this part of the universe, at this time in human history, this location, partially because you're here. Because you can reach those people in ways that are unique to you. Value that sacred mission. Love that. All right, over to you. Why is it a bad idea? Um, I would say even just in terms of like connecting to yourself and other people, like you said, trying to be your higher self in this lifetime um, will help you help others, but also like connect to other people and potentially help other people. So kind of kind of similar to what you said just more of that connection piece of really building like true um connection with others like in this lifetime i think it would hold you back if you chose comfort yeah we disconnect from others now not only that but we create suffering for others because we create suffering for those who depend on us those who suffer when you suffer like right. if you're in mental anguish those who care about you are going to experience suffering you're right. passing on the pain. You become a tool for passing on pain, right? The people who care about you suffer when you suffer, right? Also, do we have people that look up to us? For sure. Right. And do we have people that look up to us and role model us? And is it possible they'll follow our example and always choose the comfortable thing in the moment? And could it yeah. screw them up? And what's the worst thing that could happen to them? Right? Yeah. And an example is this. If you're a person who, instead of fixing your life, you soothe yourself with alcohol. You just say, oh, you, know, I, you know, I've got a lot of troubling things going on in my life. I'm going to have a drink. Then other people are going to learn that example too. And they might get messed up on over drinking. Right? They might develop right. terrible habits because they followed what you, they said, well, when life is hard, you got to drink. No, when life is right. hard, you got to change. Like what, what, what kind of an example did you set for people? Right? <laughs> yeah, no, it's Your true. reputation can suffer. You become known as a slacker or a lazy bones, right? Because, uh, so there's, um, I also think that it's a, 
it's ingratitude if we don't try. It's ingratitude to those who gave your, their lives so you could have yours with its opportunities. To not give your all now would be a slap in the face to all of those ancestors and people in the human story that have gave it their all. Generations of ancestors fought wars, drought, famine, plagues, all of it, giving everything they could to transmit this life that's made possible for you now. Just imagine all the great inventors and innovators from previous generations. Imagine they all decided to hold back on being <laughs> who they could be, right? It's true. it's true. Imagine Thomas Edison held back, Nicholas Tesla, Nikola Tesla held back, you know, like imagine like Jesus held back and just said, I'm going to live a comfortable life. You know, I'm not going to go out there and face potential un discomfort, you know, like imagine mother Teresa just said, I'm going to just, I'm going to stay at home on my lazy boy couch. Like I'm not going to go out and help the poor. Right. Like, or Gandhi, like I'm not going to do an uncomfortable thing. Forget that. Right. Right. You know, like, and, and then even athletes, like take, a, take like a Wayne Gretzky. Imagine Gretzky decided to have a comfortable life and just play video games. Like he had to practice hockey. Like all, anyone, everybody faced, all of these people did not vilify discomfort. Right. Because they knew the discomfort was a test, right? Our lives, your life is an inheritance of countless humans before you. They gave you the opportunity to have the life you have now. They're your audience and from another dimension, they're cheering you on in this battle, the battle inside you between the disciplined and undisciplined mind. They've helped set this all up. It's an insult to them if we don't do the best we can right now. Something to think about. <laughs> and, and I like to think about all these things because this is how we can create maximal motivation. And, you know, sometimes fear motivates people. So I'd say, you know what? you're going to curse your future. You're creating problems for the future self by putting off progress. You're creating for all problems for the future Monica or the future Brendan. And, and that dampens our enthusiasm about the future. It's like, oh man, because I've been sweeping everything under the rug, I'm going to have to face it one day. Like, and right. even if you think you're doing good, bad tendencies may be under the surface, waiting for the right moment to pop up in your life and create horrible suffering. Whether it's like pride and ego, like you just can't take feedback. So now somebody's going to give you feedback some point down the road and you're going to screw everything up, say things you shouldn't say and do things you shouldn't do, right? right? Even if things, even if you tell yourself things are fine right now, that's not necessarily so. They just, the bad tendencies are just dormant. <laughs> you know, like that's a, right. there's a big difference because that's another thing people will do is they'll just kind of like uh, say everything's good. Um, and I think also when we- Hmm? What would you say is like a good tool to, to, um, stay in this like highly motivated state? I think we need to have motivational hygiene, hygiene. and I think you can't do it unless you've got like a twice daily check-in works best. Okay. Okay. So when I talked about wisdom prescription, that, that video yeah, and handout is really good. Like you need a, you need a daily ritual to stay in touch with the insights that will keep you motivated, whatever they happen to be. Okay. Right. Yeah, that if makes you sense. don't have that daily ritual, you will fall under a hypnosis, like a, a just be getting too distracted with the world, a worldly hypnosis. Okay. We need to stay on course and we can't do that if we're not constantly checking in. Makes sense. That's right. Fair. So, um, and I would say more than anything is accountability. We need to make it more uncomfortable to not do the progressive thing. And usually a really big source of discomfort is letting other people down. So we need to set ourselves up in a position where not following through means letting somebody down because then we're just going to do the thing we should do because it's actually the more comfortable thing. Okay. Gotcha. And, and I think that's a good way to start and then just build some momentum. The thing with discipline is the more you do it, the better it feels and the more motivated you are to act on discipline. Right. Right. Ironically, ironically, you know, the, uh, the less you discipline yourself, the less you will find discipline to be attractive. When you give in to the quitting mind, it becomes stronger. It gains momentum. 
It gets easier to quit. Your standards go lower and lower. You become softer, weaker, more fragile until maybe one day you hit rock bottom and things are so unbearable that change becomes something that you have to do now. Right. Right. But there's bad, there's, there's negative momentum to all this stuff for sure. And I I think it's also important because even if you take a look at it between, you know, the battle between good and evil, like to choose progress, comfort over progress is really to surrender to the evil side, because this is a vice that prevents us from putting in the necessary effort to overcome other vices. You won't be able to put in the necessary effort to overcome envy or greed or anger and all these other things that you might struggle with if you have the vice that prevents you from putting in a a higher level of effort and focus. It keeps you trapped and a slave to all this stuff. And what does that do? It leads to deathbed regrets, a regrettable past. We look back on our life and we regret the things we didn't do that we should have done. Nobody looks back on their life and is like, I wish I pampered myself more with just immediate comforts in the moment. And I wish I gave myself more excuses to quit. Like, no, no, this is deathbed regrets. Yeah. But here's something significant to think about. And I'll leave this as the last one on this point, but it goes with us beyond the grave. Scars of the body and when the body perishes. But according to Yogananda, the scars of the soul, spiritual scars like sloth, they go with us beyond the grave and we come back many times creating horrible suffering for ourselves and others you can break the cycle in this lifetime you can break the cycle in this lifetime by taking it seriously something to think about now and and we used a lot of negative motivation there but i think there's also a positive side to this that if you decide you're going to make the choice to discipline yourself it's a gift to your future self think about how much more enjoyable life can be when you're at your higher potential serving your higher purpose it's a better life when you're your better self think about what you've accomplished in life already without putting in the full effort you know did you ever truly put in a hundred percent effort on anything probably not but probably close but you know, without putting it in full effort, I mean, life holds greater rewards for the higher potential version of you. You're going to spend the rest of your life in the future. Might as well set it up to be as good as possible. Right. And do this for yours. You do this for those you care about. Your progress is a duty and gesture of love to others. When you're better, you're better able to help and love the people you care about. And I'd say, do this for the creator as a way to honor the creator. By making progress, you fulfill the purpose of creation inside of you. That's a good driving force. Others, right? I don't know what other what other driving force there could be. That's okay, good. Right we set the foundation. <laughs> yeah 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 so this this is but you need to and i would say okay we said a lot there in the foundation piece pick your favorites and remind yourself yeah go back and pick three pick your pick your top three and stay in touch with them if you don't do that you can't build without a motivational foundation and you may need to touch base with them once or twice a day just reread them have just a quick little five minutes of me time and you read it and start with something simple like that yeah right You have to start with a to be list before you'll ever be successful in a sustained to do list. And you have to be the more motivated version of you to succeed here. Because the undisciplined mind will overrule the disciplined mind. Oh, no, no, don't worry about it. Like hockey's on. Go watch hockey instead. Forget this five minute rule thing. Ah, forget it. Brendan's an idiot. Like, oh, you should be, (laughs) you know, doing other things, right? Like, you'll always come up with excuses. Yeah, there's, you know. There's no shortage of excuses out there to do the undisciplined thing and, and, and then pretend like you were a victim. Well, so-and-so said I didn't have to do this, like blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. You know? Yeah. So, so set reminders. Yeah. Twice daily, you revisit them. 
I even envision this as like a drawing, like the foundation blocks, right? Mm -hmm. On top of the to-be list. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the more you care about progress, the more you'll commit to progress. <laughs> so we got to make Fair it point. so meaningful. But would you rather learn through hard experience and suffering or would you rather learn through understanding and wisdom and break the pattern now? The motivation will make you more resourceful. And I'd say, don't take another step forward onto the solutions and the to, to do until this mission is a must. And say, press pause, make this a must first before we go on to the other stuff. Right? right. So now here's something to think about. We might think about how we might shift to prioritizing progress over comfort, right? How we might shift. Okay, so there's three dimensions. And I would say that we need to address all of them, okay? On some level. First is physical, physical progress. What do I wish to get done? What experiences do I wanna have physically? What skills do I need to work on physically, right? Like. Do I need more endurance? Do I need more strength? Do I need more flexibility? Do I need better posture, right? You know, where do you lack the will to make progress physically? You know, I'm not learning what I need to do or I'm not, I'm not consistent in my eating plans or exercise plans, whatever it is. You know, where are you avoiding the effort, right? Somebody might use injury as an excuse not to exercise, right? So right. here's some things to think about in the physical physical laziness dimension. And then ultimately, I want to I want to break it down to like a few things. What is your to do list here? What should you do more of physically? What needs more attention? Make a list. Your to don't list? What should you do less of? What do you need to detach from? <laughs> Make a list. Yeah, your to be list? What new or different things should you consider or try? Right. Somebody might be like, well, Monica mentioned kettlebells. Maybe I'll try the kettlebell thing. Maybe it'll be fun. Maybe I'll get hooked on it. You know, like, so make a list and then find a role model. It life is too short to figure out everything on our own. It's best to find somebody that has what you want or understands that and, and take note of how they're able to make progress here and they can help you navigate a step-by-step -step path. Right. So I would take a look at all these things and then come up with maybe one or two easy things you can commit to. Just one or two. We want baby steps, just like in the movie, What About Bob? Bill Murray's just going nuts about how much he loves that idea of baby steps, right? <laughs> and, uh, and we want to be able to build some winning momentum, you know? Like we want to be able to have some quick wins and because um, and that's more motivating, Right. Once you start, so somebody, for example, somebody I coached on this, their whole thing from the physical progress was just to have an extra glass of water a day. Start with that. Perfect. Right. Love it. Love it. Just something easy. Now we're going to go into mental progress, right? So for this, where do you lack the will to make progress mentally? You know, what do you wish to get done? You know, maybe you want to break a thought habit or something or what experiences do you want to have? Well, I want to have greater beautiful emotions and happiness and inner peace and all these things, right? You know, like um, what skills do you need to work on? Right? Maybe self-awareness, self-regulation, right? Something like that. Um, perfection of character. A lot of people will just say, that's just me. You know, but no, perfection of character is one of your important duties in life. Don't say that's just me and be and continue to have these like bad tendencies. What the heck? That's mental laziness, right? You've right, already given up. There's no greater return on investment than, you know, becoming a better version of you because you bring who you are to each and every life circumstance. And so we want to think of what is a to-do list? What should we do more of? What needs more attention? What is our to-do list mentally? What is our to-don't list? What should we do less of? What do we need to detach from? 
What is our to be list? What new or different things should we try? They might say, okay, well, I need to watch this recording. Monica said I should watch, or I need to try having like a coffee inspiration chat with Monica. Like, cause she's always brings, she always uplifts me, you know, like maybe I should try to set that up every week. I, I have coffee with Monica and she, we just have uplifting conversation, right? Find a role model, find somebody who has what you want. Somebody who seems to have that kind of, um, that resilient positivity or that seems to have inner peace or always seems to have an empowering perspective on everything, you know, like find somebody that has what you want and role model. How did they do that? How did they get to that point? You know? Um, and then, so, cause the success will leave clues, right? Yeah. So take a look at your list and maybe decide on something you can do for winning momentum. And it could be something like to do game changer every day, take a problem and what's good, what can be learned? How can I make it better? You know, um, it could be coming up with a system to maximize your motivation. Give yourself a motivational shower every day, like motivational hygiene, because you're going to get dirty with motivational decline. So you need to give yourself a daily motivational shower. You need to read the reasons of the things that get you motivated, right? Um, so we need to just consider maybe even optimizing your self-talk, right? The way the Wait, things you say yeah. to yourself, like there could be so many different uh, things to say here. Yogananda said about, oh, Red's back. There he is. Getting some sun, hey, Red. Red. Hey, Red. 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy. Okay. Now, um, Yogananda said, mental laziness is the secret cause of all weakness. Yogananda said that. That's a big deal. That's a big statement. He said the mental lazy man. Now, at that time, they used man as a term for men and women, but the mentally lazy man is the most hopeless. He does not even want to make an effort to succeed. Man must change his slothful mental habit and cease to think his present status is predestined. Okay. That's a big deal. So and then the third category is spiritual progress. Where do we lack the will to make progress spiritually? Sometimes pe people are spiritually unadventurous. They're just not doing anything to explore things spiritually. Sometimes they're indifferent to spiritual progress. They have a routine that's just not getting them anywhere. They're still anxious and they have their fears, right? Right. Or they, they're very close-minded and set in a way that they've been following that's clearly not working out. So what do you want to get done? What experiences would you want to have? What skills do you want to have? You know, um, come up with a to-do list. What should we do more of? What needs more attention? What's your spiritual to don't list? What should we do less of? And it might be, I need to stop associating with these people who are, who are leading me to more spiritual decay. Like, you know, because environment is stronger than willpower. So when I surround myself with these people in these environments, it's not good for me spiritually doesn't minister to my soul. I need to stop watching those crazy movies that, that um, affect me on a negative level. I need to stop watching the negativity in the news or whatever, because it's spiritually, it's getting to me, you know, right. we need to think to be list, what new or different things should we try? And then find a role model, like a spiritual teacher or guide or leader or something that you can, that can navigate a path forward for you. You know, right. it's funny, like these questions are, they're very like simple. And I think personally, just speaking with my own opinion, I feel like the questions are easy to answer. It's just something that we don't do. Like we don't challenge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think, them. I think with something like this, it's good to just take a pen through this recording and just, you know, fill out the answers as we go. And, right. um, also, just have fun with the process. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Jump in. But yeah, but that is that is a matter of sloth, not, not coming up with a structured plan. We're like, we could do this anytime. Wait. Why haven't we done this? Because yeah. we've been distracted. Because we haven't prioritized progress. If we think progress, we need to structure these things. These questions should be common sense. Uh, this whole coaching lesson, I just made made up from you know prioritizing progress like what what's common sense here common sense is right. we need to get motivated common sense is we need to address hopelessness common sense is we need to be able to recognize how it shows up right right anyone could have done that but it's just a matter of prioritizing it 
you know, and, and then I think the, the key thing here is small action steps, just like aiming a telescope a few millimeters in a different direction might change the end target by billions of miles. Like all of a sudden you're focused on a new galaxy right now. Our small actions today in big ways change the future that we'll step into. For sure. And so we want to decide right now to dis to persist in times of temptation. You know, we got to decide what do we want and what are we willing to sacrifice to get it? And often when we want these things that give us a better life, we got to sacrifice immediate comfort. Are you willing to make that willing sacrifice? You, you can't, there's no such thing as a free lunch, right? And I, and if you do that, you will likely have more comfort in your future, right? Give up the short-term comforts to get more in the long-term. Otherwise, if you just take the short-term, if you prioritize short-term comforts, you compromise long-term being comfortable, right? Right. right. So then the, the final thing I would say with this is accountability is big to get momentum here because, you know, it's something like only 5% of people are self-motivated. So most of us are in the 95%. And so we meet, we need to make that undisciplined more painful than discipline, create consequences on not following through. And the best way is accountability. You know, it's comfortable to break a promise to yourself. We've done it all the time. Right. Right. Uh, but it's uncomfortable to break a promise to other people. You know, so it's better to put yourself in positions where you would have to let other people down to build a disciplined habit until discipline itself becomes more attractive and natural to us. That's the way to do it, right? So, you know, come up with a focus plan and make yourself accountable. And you can think, you know, who can help me get clear on what needs to be done and the best way to do it? it can, it's good to have help in getting together a focused plan, right? Who can challenge me and give me, you know, uh, candid feedback and speak the unspoken yeah. and give me reality checks? Who can I check in with on a regular basis? Now, there's a couple different ways of, but we want to consider all these things, right? Now, there's a couple different levels of accountability. Bronze accountability is, you know, usually somebody's helping you out for free and naturally they're going to be more lenient on your lapses if you slack off. Silver accountability is kind of like group accountability that's free because, you know, being part of something like that, there's going to be more people to answer to. Gold accountability is a paid for group. If you're paying and you're in a group, you've, you're obviously more invested in it, right? right? And then, but you can also do like a mix and combine many of these and that will work best, you know, just to combine so many of these different options. Platinum, <laughs> platinum accountability is like a paid for personal paid for, right? That would be like a personal coach you invest in that can yeah. uh, really give you the customized um, help you need and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> life was getting too serious every now and then when life gets too serious, a chipmunk needs to do something fun. Like jump at my <laughs> computer screen. That was cute. She's still there. She's looking at me like, did you like that? Yeah, I did like that. That was funny. Now, I think when it comes to do a focus plan, whatever your plan is, just know this. Winning the day starts with winning in the morning. The energy you create in the morning carries through the day. So your plan should prioritize the morning, a morning routine. Okay. Um, put the least fun stuff first. Do the least fun activities when you have the most focus and, and motivation. And usually that's first. Brian Tracy wrote a book called Eat the Frog First. Like if you have to eat a whole bunch of food and one of the things is a frog, eat the frog first. It's just, and he's an expert on this stuff. He's one of the best out there. So um, by far. So um, yeah, those are some things to think about. So we have, let's, let's just review what we talked about. Okay. Perfect. First of all, this is one of the seven deadly sins, mental, physical, spiritual laziness. It's a spell that doesn't want to be broken. We have to start by building the motivation. We have to be repulsed by this behavior. We have to be 10 out of 10 motivated. You can't succeed unless you're like 10 out of 10 motivated to go against this thing. I just think about coming back, reincarnating many, many different lives and suffering the same vices horribly. And I'm like, oh, and who knows how many times I've done that already? Like, yeah. I don't remember <laughs> everything that's happened. How many times have I suffered with this character of vice, you know, like, so we need to be able to think about, you know, 
build a foundation on why is it a bad idea to do this? We also need to get over our hopelessness and be like, why is success possible? Right. And then we need to kind of like take inventory, like where are my opportunities for progress spiritually and mentally and, and physically, and then create some sort of accountability for a regular ritual that helps us make progress. Right. So breaking that all down, that is really the path to overcoming sloth. And I think with sloth in particular, it's one that it's better to, it's, it's, it's a do it yourself project. Nobody can do it, but you. And one of the first things you can do is just in some way, team up with somebody who can help you figure out the best things to do and the best way to do it and keep you accountable. Right. Like that really helps. Okay. What are your key takeaways from today's discussion? Well, to be honest, I think just having more of that, like that rinse or that routine would be uh, something that I think, well, I know for me, I would definitely want to improve in, especially like taking those, the mental, the physical and the spiritual side of things. I want to kind of dive into that and just write down a few of my ideas. Um, I think it would be a really good tool to kind of keep going back on um, and optimizing because I think for me personally, I know you said your driving force is, you know, reincarnating and going through those same suffering. But for me, I think my, one of my biggest foundation pieces is just impacting the people around me and not weighing them down. So if that's going to be my driving force going forward, then that's what I want to like focus on and remind myself of daily. So I think that would be an empowering way to just keep pushing. So yeah, that and double my takeaway double down on that think about people you care about in future lifetimes and how you how you let them down too right <laughs> many lifetimes <laughs> of letting down people you care about <laughs> yeah 100 <laughs> percent. yeah so figure out that driving force and that's really big because when you are maximally motivated you'll be resourceful to figure out the way to do it right you know if you have a big enough why you will figure out the how and that's why i'm just like spend the most time on getting motivated and why it's a bad idea to always ask yourself what do i want to do instead of what is the right thing to do mm -hmm. that's big what what do i want to do as a matter of comfort and preference versus what is the right thing to do right now and that's one of the things i'll always ask myself to make sure i'm not indulging in sloth right all right. So this conversation, uh, thank you for sharing your, uh, your wisdom and your time for those who might benefit from this recording. I thought you were a 10 out of 10 awesome out there today. The chipmunks and blue thank jays and you. squirrels were 10 out of 10. This, uh, the sunrise, <laughs> <laughs> sunrise coaching sessions. I love it. That's awesome. Let's do a, uh, let's do a go team on three because we're all in this together, figuring out battle plans against the opponents that hold us back from becoming who and what we're meant to be. And today's all about sloth, the seven deadly sin, not the cute three, three clawed thing that hangs upside down and makes, makes a funny grins. Anyway, the one that makes us ruin our <laughs> opportunities in life. Go team on three. You ready? Go one, team. We're ready. Two, three. Go team. Thank you. Go team. Bye. Yeah.